Hi everybody. We'll start in a little under 30 seconds. 26 seconds to be exact. Welcome to the Bob the Canadian broadcasting system. <laughs> I was just making a little joke to myself uh, earlier about how um it's kind of like I have a little TV station here in some ways. Not really but uh we'll start in about eight seconds. Well, hello and welcome to this live English lesson where once again, it's a Saturday morning and you get to ask me questions and I will do my very best to answer them as best as possible. Questions, of course, about the English language. Uh, after all, this is a YouTube channel where you can learn English. I'm Bob the Canadian and I teach English here on YouTube. It has but it has been it has been <laughs> a really cool adventure for me. I have enjoyed doing this for a long time now over four years and I think I will continue enjoying this for a very long time to come. Uh, I do wanna say hi to Madi and Rod the Brazilian English teacher, Julia Olis, Lolly Lolly, Elias. Let me scroll back here. I saw Semra earlier. Uh, I know Brent from American English with this guy is here. Natalia Belgrade is here as well. Um let me scroll back and see if there's anyone else to say hi to. Of course, a uh, big hello to Todd and Dave who are here to moderate the chat. I see Anuat and Panthera have jumped into the lesson. That's awesome and I see that Semra is back and Patana is here as well. Very cool to see all of your familiar faces. Even though you're just a name, it's kind of a familiar face for me. Uh, a few things before we get started. There will be a link that will show up in the chat from Dave and Todd which will let you ask a question using a form. Please don't ask questions uh, in the chat. Please have good English conversations between each other. Some people show up early and they say hi to the people that they have gotten to know through these live streams and that's really cool to see. So, please enjoy the chat for what it is, a time to chat with others and please Enjoy the lesson as much as you can. I will try to answer as many questions as I can. There's already 10 questions. I better get started. Uh let me get to the first question here. Uh let's see here. Now, first question today is from Mike and Mike says, hi, Bob. Could you define these to stomach, to play your hand and to pry? Thanks. When you we usually use to stomach in the negative. Like if I can't stomach something, it means that I don't like it. So, I would say this. I can't stomach when people complain a lot. So, that just means it doesn't mean my stomach's sore. It it actually has nothing to do with your stomach. It just means that you don't like it. I can't stomach it when people complain a lot. It bothers me. Um when you play your hand, um it means that maybe you were doing something secretly and now you've revealed it. And to pry has two meanings. I actually did a video did I do that? No, I'm not sure if I did. Yes, with the paint can. So, you can pry the lid off a paint can but if you ask someone a lot of questions, we would also say that you are prying, okay? Sometimes people who are relatives of mine will pry too much. It means they will ask me a lot of questions that maybe I'm not sure I want to answer. Hey, let me just do an audio check here and we will keep moving along. There we go. Actually, I think I'm zoomed in a little far. Let me zoom out a bit. There we go. Um okay, next question is from Frank. Frank says, what do you, let me just read this. What you need to do is reading or to read. Which one should I use? I don't understand when the ing form goes there. So, it's comes down to learning verb tenses. Now, I did some videos on the present simple and the present continuous. So, I can say things like this. I like to read but I can also say I like reading. So, in the second example, I've changed it um a little bit. So, it's not really fair. Sometimes the ing form of the of the verb is actually not totally being used like a verb. So, that might make it a little bit tricky but here's how it usually goes. You could say I like eating pizza. So, that means that in general, you like eating pizza, okay? But if you say I like to eat pizza every day, it's a little more specific but I can understand the problem, Frank, because we kind of switch these verb tenses around a little bit but I would say this. Go and watch my two videos on the present simple and the present continuous and you will get a little bit better of an understanding 
uh, of when to use which. I don't think I just did a very good job uh, of explaining it but those videos actually help quite a bit. Next question from Brand. Um and Brand says, how can I pronounce I've, thatted, it'll and would've? Cheers, Bob. So, let me use these in a sentence and try to not think about pronouncing them, okay? I've had a good day today, okay? So, so far today, I've had a good day. I have had a good day. I've had a good day. So, there's I've. Um and if someone said to me, um I'm going to give you a hundred dollars, I could say, ah, oh, that'd be nice. That'd be nice if you gave me a hundred dollars. So, that'd. When I try to say it by itself, when I try to say it without putting it in a sentence, I feel like I'm gonna say it wrong because it sounds really funny. Um and that'd be funny, wouldn't it? You would laugh. But anyways, if someone wanted to give me a hundred dollars, that'd be nice. Um it'll be a while before we're done, okay? It will be a while before we're done this lesson. It takes about an hour. I usually live stream for about an hour um but it'll be a while, okay? It'll be several um minutes. It'll be about 55 minutes before this lesson is done. Um and I would have started earlier but I find 11 a.m. is a good time to start my lesson. So, I would have started earlier but I thought 11 was a good time. Keep it at the same time. That makes everybody happy. Um just jumping over to the chat. I see Fatwadi is here. I see lots of nice conversations going on between members. Olivaldo is here as well. Um and let me see here. Lots of people. Good to see all of you. Let's get to the next question. Let's see here. Next question is from Daniel from Czech. Dear teacher Bob, would you recommend watching the American Ellen show to improve our listening skills. Thank you, Dan. I recommend if you're going to do listening, I recommend that you do watch things that you enjoy so that watching it is something that is fun for you and you like doing it. So, if you like watching Ellen, then yes, it is a great show to watch. If someone enjoys watching a different type of show, then maybe Ellen isn't the show for them but certainly, I would recommend If you find shows you like to watch every day, um just start watching them. It's just very, very good for you. Um it's also not a bad show because it's not totally scripted. So, um you kind of hear some real everyday English while you're watching a show like that. Let's see here. Um SL Lanka say is set. So I'm having trouble talking today. S. L. Lanka says, hi, Bob. This lesson inspired me to learn English and for that, I am thankful. You are a truly wonderful teacher. Well, thanks, S. L. Lanka. My question is, what's the difference between avenge and revenge? So, when somebody does something to you, sometimes you want revenge. You want to get back at them. You want to do something um to punish them a little bit. You want to get revenge. Avenge is similar but sometimes it's used more like if someone did something mean to my brother, I want I want I might want to avenge someone. So, it's a little different in terms of who the target was of the original uh problem. Let's look up the difference though. Difference between avenge and revenge. I'm gonna look it up online. So, Avenge means to seek retribution on behalf of somebody else. Revenge is about seeking retribution for yourself. So, it's just a slight difference in terms of who was the original person uh who had something not nice happen to them. Uh let's see here. Next question is from Tomas. Is it okay to say do what, say what, verb plus what or a response like what are you doing? the verb alone. So, um what are you doing? Do what? You wouldn't respond with that. Um say what and do what. They're very direct ways of speaking English. They're if you're very familiar with someone, if someone says um I want you to if I say to my kids, I want you to clean off the table. One of my kids could say do what? You want me to do what? And it's very direct. It's not impolite but it's not polite. It's kind of in the middle there. It's very familiar. Um we don't often use the phrase say what. It's a very direct way of asking someone to repeat themselves. If I said um you need to clean off the table right now and if my if one of my kids said say what, it means maybe they heard me, maybe they didn't, maybe they don't agree with me. So, it's kind of a rude 
somewhat rude response. Just a little bit rude. Uh let's see here. Next question is from Eduardo. Hi, Bob. Good morning. Good morning, Eduardo. I just wanna say thanks for yesterday's lesson. It was so funny and interesting for me. Today, no questions. Just gonna pay attention. So, yesterday, we did a lesson about the uh, the dentist and the eye doctor. The dentist being one of my least favorite places to go. Uh and it was quite enjoyable. It was an enjoyable lesson. If you do want to watch it, a shorter version will come out tomorrow on my channel and you can pop back in and watch it. It'll be about 25 minutes long. Uh let's get to the next question. Um so, Johan from Quebec says, hi, Bob. Could you pronounce admirable, clothed, diverse, and syrup? And I would like to know the difference between guarantee and warranty. Thank you. So, let's start with the last one. A guarantee and a warranty are the same thing. When I buy a new washing machine, it comes with a two-year guarantee or a two-year warranty. Um sometimes we use the word guarantee though a little differently. We'll say, we guarantee this washing machine for two years. We wouldn't use warranty like that. We would say, this washing machine has a two-year warranty. We guarantee it will work for two years. So, there is they can be used slightly differently. And then pronouncing the words again. Um admirable. Um there are a lot of teachers that I work with who I think are very admirable people. I admire them. Um clothed. Actually, I don't have my reading glasses on and I thought it said hothead but it says clothed. (laughs) A hothead is something different. Um so, people usually walk around clothed. They don't often walk around (laughs) without clothes on. Uh diverse. So, it's diverse but when I say it quickly, I probably say diverse. There are, there is a diverse group of people living in my town. So, diverse is kind of probably the correct way but in fast speech, you say diverse. And then syrup. Sometimes uh well, I used to have maple syrup on my pancakes but I'm trying not to have added sugar right now. So, lately, I have not been doing that. Uh let's see here. Um see some nice chat going on. Dave the Canadian answering uh Tafik's question. Yeah, Tafik, we'll go for about 50 more minutes. Usually, the uh live question and answer session uh English lesson is about uh an hour long. So, we'll see. Um I try not to go too much longer because I don't want to talk too much. Eventually, your voice gets a little bit sore. So, okay, let's see here. Next question is from um M Bilal. Sir, could this sentence be other than conditional? Would I have seen you in anything? Um so, you can ask this question a few times like so, maybe you've met someone who says they're an actor and they star in movies. You could say, would I have seen you in anything or have you been in anything I've seen or have you been in any movies? So, technically, it's the the would is the conditional form but it's really just a way of asking a question about whether something happened or not. So, would I have seen you in anything? It's similar to when you ask for something, if you say, I want a drink or I would like a drink, the second sentence is somewhat conditional but it's more just a a polite way of asking the question. So, even though it is a verb tense, it's really just a form we use to be polite. Um I would like a glass of water. I would like a hamburger. I would like french fries and your question is very similar. Similar. Would I have seen you in anything? Uh let's see here. Um Next question is from Valerie from Ukraine. Hi, tell me please, what is the difference between made of, out of, from, or with? (laughs) Accidental and casual. Thank you a lot. So, this sweater is, I don't know if it's cotton. Let's pretend it's cotton. This sweater is made of cotton. This sweater is made out of cotton. This sweater is made of cotton. This sweater is made from cotton. This sweater is made with cotton. All of those sentences are correct and I need to apologize again for the English language. This uh is made of glass. This is made out of glass. This is made from glass. This is made with glass. This is made of glass. All of those sentences are for the most part correct. Maybe the made out of glass. Yeah, no, they're all right. So, it's tricky, eh? Cars are made of metal. Cars are made out of metal. Cars are made from metal. Cars are made with metal. Cars are made of metal. English. What a crazy language. Very, very crazy. Um let's see here. 
This is a question from Ruslan about the dentist. Hi, dear. Hi, teacher Bob. Might be a yesterday's question. Yep. Do dentists in Canada tamp filling with an instrument or the finger? I had it done with a finger once. It was disgusting. So, when you have a cavity, they remove the cavity and they put in a filling. Um I think they use both. They push it in with an instrument and sometimes they push the filling in with their finger. That's just the dentist sometimes. It's the way it goes. Um hola, mister Bob from Ario. My question is, what does beat on I think you might mean drum. Let me read this again, Ario. My question is, what does beat on the dr- on dream? So, we don't say beat on a dream. We would say someone might beat on a drum. Um yeah. I'm not sure. I I'm gonna have to pass on this one I think because I'm a little confused. Even with beat on a drum, like some people um march to their own drummer. That's a phrase we say when someone's just very unique and does whatever they want. They might march to their own beat or they might march to the beat of a different drummer. Um those are all little phrases with drum. Um beat and dream though. I don't know of a phrase that uses those two. Maybe uh either uh Brent who's another English teacher in the chat or Rod who's another English teacher might have some thoughts on that one. So, maybe they can uh think that through or Dave or Todd. Maybe they have a a sense. Sorry, Ario. Sometimes I can't answer the questions. Um hi, I'm Vien. What's the difference between twisting and twirling? That's an interesting one. So, if a little kid is spinning around, we would say they're twirling. When you watch figure skating, often they will be twirling on the ice. Twisting is used I think a little more often when you do something like if you have string, you can twist the string. So, you can twist two strings around each other. In fact, when we close a plastic bag, we sometimes put a twist tie on it. So, I would be twisting the twist tie to close the bag. So, I think they can mean close to the same thing but they definitely in the ways I've just used them are very distinct. Okay? So, think of an ice skater twirling on the ice, twirling over and over again. Next question from Sagar from India. Hi, teacher Bob. How are you doing? I'm good, Sagar. Thanks for asking. Please, can you explain the meaning of upholstery and textile? So, a textile is any fabric. Okay? So, this they would buy textile and they would make sweaters and shirts out of different textiles. Upholstery is when like this chair has fabric on it. So, at some point, it was upholstered. Someone put the fabric on the chair and that's called upholstery. Okay? So, that is the difference or not the difference but that's the meaning of each of those. Let me just see if there's another meaning of upholstery. Now, I can't even spell it. (laughs) I'll let Google spell it for me. So, upholstery is the soft padded textile covering on furniture such as armchairs and sofas. So, yeah, like that white chair behind me is upholstered. Um it has upholstery on it. So, I think upholstery is just specific to actual um furniture. Let's see. Next question from Potato. Hi, Potato. Hi, dear teacher Bob. I hope your day is great. It is. I hope yours is too. My question. How often do Canadians use the word one instead of an object or a point. For example, my next one is modern shoes. So, we like we use this with vehicles, right? Like right now, I have a van. Um my ne- yeah, I would say this. Right now, I have a van. It's red. I'm going to buy another one but my next one is going to be red as well. I think <laughs> I like red vehicles. Um we do it a lot. Once we've referenced what we're talking about, we will use the word one quite a bit, right? Um so, I have a camera here. This is the only one that I have, okay? This is the same camera I use to make my videos. I only have one. It is the only one that I have. The next one I buy will be a little bit more expensive and have more features. So, you can see how once we've referenced what we're talking about, right? Like um I drink water from this cup. Um this isn't the only one we have. Um I have so we do I think once we've referenced something, we will use one or sometimes it to talk about it. Uh let's see here. Next question is from Katharib or Katharibe. Hi, Bob. Do you often use ought to in everyday speech and what's the difference between must and should? Thank you. Good luck 
and best wishes from Ukraine. So, teachers sometimes use ought to. Like, you ought to do your homework tonight or it looks like you haven't been doing your work. You ought to get to work. So, it's kind of a formal way to say you should get to work. Um I guess people use it from time to time but it 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 has a kind of a formal ring to it. It's not technically a formal word ought to or phrase. Um but you might even hear me say it like I ought to get I ought to speed up so I can get through more questions. It really just means you need to do something. Um and then I must drink water during the live lesson because my throat gets a little dry. So, that's a very direct relationship, okay? It's like must means that I have to do it, okay? I must do it. I have to do it. I can't not to do it. That's a double negative but I can't not do it. Whereas, should is more like um uh, a suggestion. Like, if my throat's dry, I should drink water during the live stream. It doesn't mean I have to do it. It means if I do it, then my throat won't be as dry. One of the things I'm looking forward to is uh, winter being over even though I love winter because then the air in our buildings is less dry. In the winter, the air in our house and the air at work in our building is very dry because they um because of the heating in the building. Uh let's see here. Bonjour, Bob. This is from Lolly. Do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Canada? I'm gonna add the day there. Do you celebrate St. Patrick's Day in Canada? Merci. We don't celebrate it but we're aware of it. If there wasn't COVID right now, people would go out and celebrate it for sure but it's not a holiday or anything like that. It's more of a day where if you go to a bar on St. Patrick's Day, I think they make the beer green and there are other little things that are uh kind of fun about it but it's not a holiday or anything like that. Uh hey, Elias Gomez, thank you so much for the super chat. And the message that you've left is thanks, Bob, for all the lesson videos you've been doing. You are welcome. Um I'm excited about this coming Tuesday's video. It's a bit of a secret though but I've been learning new editing techniques. So, I always like to make my videos entertaining and educational. I hope the next one is. It's going to be fun to make. I hope I hope all of you enjoy watching it. Anyways, thanks Elias for that super chat. That's very uh nice of you. Let's see. Next question from Mikal. Hi, Bob. Why some people say if I was and others say if I were? Okay. So, let me let me let me think of two sentences because I think it's interchangeable. If I was rich, I would buy a brand new van. If I were rich, I would buy a brand new van. If he was smarter, he would get better grades. If he were smarter, He would get better grades. They they are slightly different but not enough to be distinct from each other, okay? Um they they pretty much mean the same thing. I think in informal speech, we've started to use them interchangeably. Um because if I I say things like this sometimes, if I can't answer a question, I'll say, okay, if I was you, I would ask the question in the comments and I'll answer it later. I could also say, hmm, if I were you, I would ask the question in the comments and I an- and I'll answer it later. So, it can mean both. Next question from Natalia. What is the difference between hole and pit? What is the size of them? What is the name of a large pit for treasure and a small one for planting potatoes? So, a pit is definitely bigger than a hole, okay? A hole can be in the ground. You can dig a hole to plant a potato, okay? If you were planting potatoes, you would dig holes to put the potato, the small potato pieces in with some eyes on them. The potato pieces have to have eyes so they grow. You would plant them in holes, okay? Um but you can also have a hole in your clothing. So, a hole is somewhat of a general term for you know, if if I go like this, you can't put your finger through but if I cut a hole in this, I could put my finger through. So, hole is a more general term. Um so, yeah, you can dig a hole in the ground. You could a pit would definitely be a lot bigger. You would not dig a pit to plant a potato. Uh you would dig a pit um a long time ago, they used to dig pits in the ground and throw garbage in, okay? We don't do that anymore but um a pit is definitely bigger than a hole and a pit can only be in the ground, okay? Unless of course, you're eating a peach and then there's a pit in the center. That's a different meaning of the word. Um fruit like apples and pears and peaches have a pit in the middle. 
Uh, let's see here. Uh, Abel says, hello, Bob. Hope you're doing excellent. I am. How is the weather in Canada right now? Have a wonderful day. So, I'm gonna just talk about the question for a sec. So, you can say, what is the weather like in Canada right now? Or how is the weather in Canada right now? But your use of like doesn't work in the question you asked. So, just a small correction, Abel. Let me say that again. You could say, how is the weather in Canada right now? Or what is the weather like in Canada right now? Well, I'll tell you, it has been beautiful here. I'm not sure of the exact temperature. I'm just looking it up. It is one degree high of six degrees Celsius today. Um and it's been very sunny and not very windy. So, even though six degrees Celsius might sound cold, um it's been quite enjoyable. I think it's been nice to be outside. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna skip the next question. Next question is from Mode. Hi, Mr. Bob. Would you use to be precise and to be exact interchangeably? I like to be precise. I like to be exact. I mispronounced precise there a little bit. So, ignore that just two seconds ago. Um precise. So, when I make my lessons, I like to be precise. I like to make sure I plan the English lesson well. Um and when I do that, I also like to be exact. So, they're very similar. It means great care to make sure everything is correct and well done. Um let me see here. Next question is from Arturo. Hello, mister. Good morning. My question is what is the most important skill that I need to improve first to learn to speak English? So, I just was thinking about this the other day and I think if you were just starting to speak English, if you were just starting to learn the language, the first thing I would do is I would learn like as many words as possible. Like find the most common two or three hundred words and memorize them. And then I would immediately find um a native speaker or an English teacher uh who is an expert in teaching the language. Doesn't need to be a native speaker uh on Skype or on uh FaceTime or on Zoom who I could practice with. Even though you hardly even speak the language, I think the best way to get better at speaking is to speak. Um and I think it's important to start that as early as possible. Hey, Thomas C has left super chat. Hello from Hong Kong. Thanks, Bob, for all your lessons. You are very welcome, Thomas C. Thank you for the super sticker, super chat, super chat. Um that is very much appreciated and it goes a long ways to help support the things I do on this channel. Um let's see here. Um I get this question from time to time. I like this question. This is from Nexon. Hi, Bob. My question is, what is the best time of the year to visit Canada and what city would you recommend for visiting? Thanks. Um and I answer this in a variety of ways. Usually based on which city I want to visit next in Canada. I've really been eager to visit Montreal. Montreal is a really cool city in the sense that there are people from all parts of the world that live in Montreal. There are two languages spoken quite a lot in Montreal, English and French. So, I think that is a great city to visit. But next on, it really depends on what season you like best. If you love winter and you like skiing, you should go to Alberta in the winter uh, or British Columbia in the winter. If you like milder temperatures and beautiful walks along the ocean, you should go to British Columbia or Newfoundland or New Brunswick. Um so, I can't say uh which city would be the best but personally, I'm eager to visit Montreal at some point in the future. Let's see here. Next question is from Guhan. Uh I believe Guhan mentioned before the live stream that they were new here. So, welcome. Why is the word everyone used before the word is although it is a more it is more than one person? Uh yeah, this is a tricky one. It's because everyone is a singular noun, okay? So, everyone is happy. All the people are happy. So, you notice how I made a switch there. Everyone likes pizza. All the people like pizza. So, you just have to remember that the noun itself collectively refers to a lot of people but the noun is singular, okay? Because there's no everyone's unless it's uh possessive but everyone is a singular word. Um Brent in the chat says, I've heard Vancouver is amazing. Yes, it is a nice city. I've been there a few times. 
um when my I had some family out there but I haven't been for years now. I should go at some point. Uh let's see here. Next question. Ha. <laughs> Derek, are I'm I'm not laughing at your question, Derek. I'm I'll tell you why I'm laughing in a sec. Are there any words with different pronunciation between American and Canadian such as the word process or process? Did you know that Canadians actually say process and they say process? Um and it kind of depends on how you're using the word. So, um yes, there are some words with different pronunciations between American and Canadian English but you've actually highlighted a word that many English speakers use with two different pronunciations. So, I could say this. The process for making a video is very challenging, okay? I have to think of an idea. Then I have to get my camera. I have to shoot the video and edit the video. The process is very um challenging. Did I say process or process? <laughs> when you harvest flowers, after we harvest the flowers, we have to process them. Process them. You know, I'm getting confused with my own pronunciation here. We have to process the flowers. We have to process the flowers. Yes. We say it two different ways and even Bob the Canadian isn't sure which is the correct way. Um maybe I, I'll need to go through a process later where I learn whether to say process or process. <laughs> That will be it. For now, Derek, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If Bob the Canadian doesn't know which one to use, you'll be fine if you're speaking English. No one will think that you are saying things incorrectly. Hey, give me one moment here. I'm gonna make a slight change. While I'm doing that, I do wanna thank the 500 people who are watching. I am Bob the Canadian. It's good to have you here at this live lesson. I make smaller lessons every week that come out on Tuesdays that teach different English concepts, phrases, pronunciation, uh some grammar from time to time. I do a live lesson every Friday. Uh yesterday's was this one on the dentist and the eye doctor and uh, I do this live stream three Saturdays a month. So, um if you're new here, click the subscribe button. Hey, I wanna say thank you to all my members. We are in members only chat mode. Members have their names in green in the chat. They get a little crown beside their name. Uh some of you have your six month crown. So, thank you very much for being around that long. Um if you want to be a member, you can click the um join button below or wherever it is and think about it. It's up to you. Uh let's see here. Rod is talking to Ario. Dream on is an ironic way people used to say that they think we don't get what we want. Yes. So, if someone's like um I want to be a movie star, you could say "Ah, dream on. So, you're basically saying you don't think it's possible, okay? It's not a nice thing to say but we do say it sometimes. Like if a student says to another student, I'm gonna get 100% on this test, the student beside them might say dream on which means the student doubts they'll be able to do it. Um Panthera is telling Natalia she's pretty tired. I hope you are well rested by the end of the day. Let's see here. Brent from American English says precise differently from you as an example. Yes, I say precise and Brent says some American version of precise. (laughs) I I don't know what it sounds like though. Um let me see here. We use process in Turkish or process. Yes. Uh Moto Explorer says, hi teacher Bob. Is there any verb to refer to the opposite of not to waste time? Um if I say I got off work early so I went to do my laundry and I picked up my sister on my way back home. We would just say that you're being efficient um or that you made good use of your time. There's no specific verb I can think of um but certainly I would say this. Um if you did that, you were definitely being efficient or you were making good use of your time. So, You would say, I made good use of my time. After I got off work early, I went and did my laundry and I picked up my sister on the way back home. Definitely, you made good use of your time. Anuat says, with daylight savings time, your next live lesson will come earlier than this week in Asia. Right? Thanks. Yeah, it's uh, so time changes at midnight tonight for us. We actually lose one hour. So, do keep an eye out next Friday and next Saturday. Make sure you check like in the far corner, it will tell you exactly when the live stream starts your time. So, maybe pop in early so that you're sure about that because I will still be doing it at 7 30 a.m. my time, Eastern Standard Time but that might be different for some of you depending if you observe daylight savings time. So, thank you very much for that reminder from Anuat. Thank you very much. I forgot that entirely. 
Uh, Brent says, American and Canadians have no problem in understanding each other. That's correct. Um, we have no problem understanding each other. We do sometimes still disagree with each other, but we do understand each other when we're arguing about stuff. Mostly trade. Mostly when we talk about lumber. Um, Americans and Canadians sometimes don't agree on what the price of lumber should be and whether there should be tariffs. Uh, Panthera Nori, dear teacher Bob, can you explain to me how to understand I'm torn between two different deeds or actions? Thanks a lot. So, a long time ago, I used to do this lesson at night on a Saturday and I decided it would be nicer for me to do it at 11 a.m. in the morning because then I have the rest of the day to do other things but I was really torn about it. I was torn between I knew members really liked having it at night but I wanted to do it earlier in the day. So, I was torn. That means that it was hard to make a decision because there were so many good and bad reasons to do it at different times. So, you're just torn. Um let's see here. Semra talking about we use the same to write with proses. Yes. Daniel, um how far from Bob do you live? Um yeah, I don't know Daniel if Brent answered you. Brent, I think Brent and I are about six or seven hours apart um depending on what the speed limit is. That's the factor. <laughs> uh Natalia, hello Bob. Wish you great day. My question what is the difference between words vicinity, surrounding and neighbor? Thank you. So, the ones that are synonyms, the ones that have the same meaning. So, in my vicinity, that's the area around me, uh there are a lot of farmers. In my surrounding area, there are a lot of farmers. In my neighboring area, there are a lot of farmers. So, I am changing the words a bit and using slightly different phrases. Let me use them again for you. So, in my vicinity right now, I have a glass of water, I have a remote control, my monitor, my laptop. It's all within my vicinity. It's like it's really close to me. Um surrounding is an interesting word though. You can say surrounding area. Um and it's I think it's a bigger area. Like if I'm talking about my local town or towns, I could say in my surrounding area, there are many towns. Um and then neighbor is just the person that lives beside you but you can have neighboring areas. Those are the areas beside you as well. Uh Julia Olise, hi dear teacher. What's the best gift you ever received? You know, I think some of the best gifts I've ever received have been um kind of silly gifts from my own children. Like things they've made. Um when a kid, when one of your kids makes something for you, even if it's just a drawing, that's a better gift than a Lamborghini, I think. Um let's see here. Rod saying to Panthera, she has a lot on her plate. Yes, definitely. Sita says, Bob, check your PO box in the next few days. May maybe you will receive something. Well, thanks for that, Sita. I will definitely do that. I did just pop in a week ago but I will go check again later. Um uh, let me just scroll back. I wanna make sure I didn't miss anything here. Um if you're wondering why that question just sits there for everyone who's watching, it's because I'm answering questions from members in the chat right now. So, have a look at the chat and you will see uh where that is. Let's see. Bob, I'm between torn between and then have you ever met him in person? No, Daniel, but Brent and I email back and forth uh and we have talked via Zoom once last summer. We should do that more often by the way. Julia, hello, dear teacher. What's the best gift you ever received? Drawings from my kids. You have a lot on your plate. You can tell I'm behind now, right? Um Currently, we use a lot of English words at offices in Turkey. That's from Semra. It's quite common to use English because it's kind of one of the default languages of business. So, it's common if you work in a business in another country to use some English. Um and then Brent saying, yeah, we live about six hours from each other. We've never never met in person one day. Yes, one day we will meet and we'll make a video if we do that. I promise. Bob, could you pronounce that phrase? Yes, English can be weird. It can be understood through tough, thorough thought though. <laughs> yes, I had to slow down for that one, uh, Elias. It can be understand. It can be understood through tough, thorough thought though. Daniel says, um thanks for the answer, Brent. That is approximately the distance I would go from one corner of the Czech Republic to the other one. Yes, Canada and the United States are definitely like there's long distances to cover if you want to visit someone. Um Elias, very useful for practicing words. Yes. Um 
Panthera. Dear teacher Bob, is there any other way to say at all costs? So, it's not about literally the money but the fact that something must be done for sure. When we use the phrase at all costs, costs actually refer to other things besides money. So, it's totally good because it can mean there's a cost for time, there's a cost for money, there's a cost for supplies, there's a cost in terms of the work you need to do. So, at all costs actually means money and more. It already is built in. Uh oh, Sita wanted to write maybe. Yes, gotcha, Sita, for sure. Uh, let me back up for a sec here. Okay, I'm getting a little bit behind here. You can see my mouse on the screen when I go there. Um yes, New York has very strict speed limits. They love to nab out of state plates to use American slang. Yes, you have to be very careful when driving on the highways um in Canada and the United States because the speed limits are enforced. They definitely love love to nab people who aren't from that state or from that country. We do the same here, Brent. I think Americans get more speeding tickets than Canadians do. Daniel says, Brent has replied to how far. No problem. Um let me jump down here. Brent's up for another Zoom chat. It was a lot of fun. Yes, we should do that at some point, Brent. Um I wish to visit the USA one day. This is from Daniel Lockman. Once the pandemic is over, I love types of cities like Los Angeles. So, Daniel, I have not been to Los Angeles but I was able to go to a teacher's training convention in San Diego probably about eight or nine years ago and that is a beautiful city. Um it San Diego is just awesome. It was warm. It was it was just awesome. Really good food as well. It was really nice visit. Um let's see here. Elias says, what does the phrase mean? You were burning the midnight oil last night. It means you stayed up late to get a job done. Uh students often burn the midnight oil or they pull all nighters to get their homework done or to get papers written. Panthera, the word gazillion means the same as several lot of considerable amount. Is there a rule what I can use this expression for? So, gazillion is kind of a funny word that just means like a lot of something. We use it the same as a ton like Ah, oh, there were a ton of people at the concert. There were a gazillion people at the concert. It's very informal and it's kind of like it's a bit like slang. Um it's not totally slang but uh, it's not actually a number as far as I know but we do use it. Yeah. Like wow, there were a gazillion people there. Not right now though. During COVID, there's nowhere you can go where you could see a gazillion people. Um let's see here. Semra, I agree with Bob, you, Bob. Business language, science language is definitely English. Yeah. A lot of it for sure. I have as I mentioned before, I have um distant relatives in Holland and they are most of them when they visit can speak really good English because most of them work in business. So, Panthera says, thank you so much. All the answers are totally clear. Awesome. Uh Brent says, I can drive five hours north and still be in my my own state. Folks in Russia are laughing I'm sure. Yes. Um I can drive for a very long time and still be in Ontario as well. The provinces and states in North America are very big. Slava says, hi, Bob. I heard that in Canada it uses more old fashioned French than in France. Slava, it's definitely a unique version of French. Um I would equate it in English to in English people from Australia and people from Britain and people from Ireland and people from South Africa. People who speak English from different parts of the world have different accents and certainly people from Quebec have the same. Their French is definitely different. Um let's see here. Brent says, I went to a teacher's conference in San Francisco about 15 years ago. Beautiful city and Elias says, thanks, Bob. Well, hey, thanks uh to all the members. I am gonna flip back to normal chat mode again. Give me a second here to turn that back on and as I'm doing that, I will once again say thank you to all my members. If you're wondering what a member is, you click the join button, you sign up, you get your name in green and a crown during the chat. You get to participate in members only chat. Get an extra video on Wednesdays where I ramble on about something that has struck my (laughs) struck my fancy. Something that I just feel like talking about um and obviously still kind of an English lesson, an English listening lesson uh, for all of you. Let me see. Madi says, I'm here but I have no question, Bob. Wish you all the success. Thanks, Madi. And Daniel says, yes, I have heard from my cousin that San Diego is such a beautiful city. I should go there one time. Yes. Uh Orion 88 says, Bob, what about Detroit? 
I have only been to Detroit once. I went to Detroit to see Billy Joel in concert and it was a super fun night. Now, that was a long time ago. That was probably 30 years ago that I saw Billy Joel in concert. Hey, let's get back to the question. Um, Derek says, are there any words? Oh, wait a second here. I've done something wrong. I must have clicked skip. Let me skip this one and answer this. I think it's on the screen now. There we go. Chico says, um what is the difference between get something up and lift? Do you use verb? Okay, let me do that one first. Sometimes you have to get something up high. Uh it can mean two things. There might be something up on a shelf and you might say, um can you help me get something down? Can you help me get something up uh from up there? But you can also say, can you help me get something up? Which means you want to put it up there. Um yeah, it's a little different. I think I've explained that poorly. Let me try to re-explain. Um sometimes you want to get something from up there but sometimes you want to get something up there. Yeah, you can that's a tricky one. I I should look at that one a bit more. Uh lift is simply to pick something up. So, if you have something you can lift it and you can set it down. You can lift it and set it down. You can pick it up and then the difference between accommodate and accommodation. Um So, when you accommodate someone, they have certain things that they need and you do those things for them, okay? Sometimes a student will be going on a trip and they need me to send them their lessons while they're gone. So, I will accommodate them. What that means is I will do what they need me to do. I will send them their lessons and then we would then say that I made an accommodation for them, okay? So, we flipped the noun form. Uh thanks in advance. Best wishes from Ukraine. Thanks, Chico. Hopefully, that made some sense. Yasin. Hi, Bob. How can we make English learning progress more fun? Thanks in advance. In advance. Um well, there's a few things that I would say right away. Number one, it's not all going to be fun. So, part of the process of learning English or process of learning English (laughs) is that um you have to realize that some of it isn't fun. But you should find ways to make some parts of it really fun. You should read books that you enjoy. You should watch TV shows that you enjoy. You should listen to music that you enjoy. You should find someone to talk to one on one um like from Preply or Italki where you enjoy talking to that teacher. Um but there are things that just aren't fun about learning a language. It is a lot of hard work. So, you have to find joy and happiness where you can. Um in the things that you choose but also be aware that it's it's just hard work and it's going to be. By the way, if you are looking for an English teacher to talk to, there is a link in the description to a website called Preply um where you can hire someone if you are learning the English language. So, if you're interested in that, have a look. Uh let's see here. Andrew. Hi, Bob. What's your favorite movie? Thank you. P.S. I love your lessons. Well, thanks, Andrew. I'm glad that you love the lessons. That's awesome. Um my favorite movie is still definitely The Martian. I love that movie with Matt Damon. I also like all of the Lord of the Rings movies. I also like all of the Marvel movies. Um yes, I like all the Star Wars movies. I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to watching movies for sure. Harry Potter though, not so much. I watched the first one or two and then I just couldn't get into it. In English, when you if you get into something, it means you like it. If you can't get into it, it means you can't find a way to like it. Uh let's see here. Next question from Rod. Hey, Rod. How's it going? Hello, Bob. Hello, (laughs) Mr. Bob. Hello. What's your best advice for students who don't have ESL and also no budget to travel to fast track their learning? Thank you. Have a great one. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Um the The cheapest and simplest way to learn English is to do all of the reading and listening on your own but to still find a way to practice your writing and your speaking um with a teacher that you can hire via Skype. There's really no other way to do it. Um learning remotely is becoming better and better all the time. The pandemic has certainly created a lot of opportunities for teachers to teach via the internet and for students to learn via the internet. So, 
I would say if you don't have a budget to travel or if you're not able to go to another country to learn the language, spend some money to hire a tutor online. That's the best thing to do. Let's see. Okay, from Heswaldo. Are both of these sentences correct or not? Let me read them before I say them out loud. I study English with Bob. That is correct. Bob is my classmate. You can also say I study English with Bob and Bob can be your teacher. Okay? So, I could say oh, I'm I'm learning French with Marie and that means that I am learning French from Marie or I'm going to class with her. I could say I'm learning French with Marie. That could mean she's my teacher or tutor as well. Um and then the next one, I study English. So, we wouldn't use from in that case. Okay? We would say I study English with Bob or I'm learning English from Bob. You could say that I'm learning English from Bob. So, let me back up. If you say I study English with Bob, Bob could be your classmate or your teacher. If you say I'm learning English from Bob, Bob is definitely your teacher. So, in order to avoid confusion, use the second phrase if you are talking about a teacher. Uh let me see here. Um yeah, sorry, just kind of reading the chat for a bit. There's a kind message from Maria. Hi, Bob. I'm still a beginner but your videos help me a lot. They are useful and also funny. I really like the countryside around your house. Happy Sunday to you and your family. Well, thanks from uh, that's from Maria who's a member of the channel. Thanks, Maria for that message. Um let's see here. Let's get to the next question though. Next question is from Yuri. Hey, Bob. I'm struggling with speaking. I understand almost every word that you or somebody says but when it comes to speaking, I'm using only simple words and stuttering a lot. Well, keep doing it, okay? Keep using simple words and just keep having conversations. The goal is not to be completely fluent when you're speaking. The goal is to have people understand you and to have a conversation. So, remember, it's not important to speak English perfectly. It's important to speak English as much as you can and speak it And speaking it imperfectly isn't bad, okay? Making mistakes is never bad when learning a language. The biggest mistake when learning a language is to not speak the language until really late in the game, okay? It's something that you should really be doing almost from the get-go is finding a way to communicate in the language that you're learning. So, it just takes a lot of practice. Um you're probably doing a lot more listening and so your brain's getting really good at listening. And you just need to find the time to do a lot more speaking. It's just the way it is though, right? It's a lot easier to listen to a lot of English during the week. It's really simple. You listen to music, you watch TV in English, you listen to the news or watch the news in English. But to find someone to speak with is a lot more challenging. Uh let's see here. Next question from Fariza. Hey, Bob, I wanna ask something. How good is the University of Toronto? So, I'm gonna rearrange some words there. How good is the University of Toronto? Ha ha, have you ever been there? Uh it's really good. By the way, um I don't brag a lot about Canada. I think Canada is a great country but I would never say it's the best country in the world. I think every country has their unique attributes but if I was to say one thing that I think Canada is really good at, it's that it is a great country to go to university in. Let me rephrase that. It's a great country if you want to come here and study in our universities. Canada has really, really good education. Our education system is one of the best in the world and our universities are amazing, okay? So, you've probably not heard me brag a lot about Canada. I don't want to ever make it sound like Canada is the best country in the world uh, because I think once again, every country has something that's good but we do have really good education. If you want a university degree and you're trying to figure out what country to come to, it doesn't matter which university you go to in Canada, you'll get a good education for sure. Hey, Alicio has given me a super sticker. Thank you so much. Uh the little uh pair jumping up and down saying thank you. I think it is. So, Alicio, thank you very much, Alicio Cruz for the support and for the super chick uh super sticker. That's awesome. Uh, making me smile watching the little guy dance in the chat. Very cool. Uh let's see here. Um 
So Kanan says, hello, Bob. I am one of your fans. What would be the correct structure of an opinion essay? Thanks. Have a nice day. So, if you are writing an opinion essay, sometimes students mistakenly think an opinion essay is just your own thoughts but an opinion essay generally should have an introduction where you introduce what you think but then it should show some evidence that you've researched people who think the same as you and people who have a different opinion than you and then some kind of logical conclusion in your own words about why you think your opinion is correct, okay? An opinion essay isn't necessarily just about like I could say I think water is the best thing to drink in the world and I could write an essay on that but the essay is more powerful if I give evidence or give facts or why my opinion is I think correct but also present counter arguments uh, against it as well. It makes for a better essay. So, introduction, statement, uh supporting evidence, contrary evidence, your own conclusion and um that would be a good opinion essay in my opinion. Hey, I do wanna say hi to the 557 people watching. If you're new here, you should click that red subscribe button. I'm Bob the Canadian. I teach English here on YouTube. There are many, many lessons for you to watch and new lessons every week. There will be a new one on Tuesday. There'll be a new live lesson next Friday. Uh, and there's always this question and answer live session that I do each Saturday just to help people understand English a bit better. So, Hicham or Hikam says, what is the difference between American and Canadian pronunciation? So, not a whole lot but it depends where you're from. So, I live one of the states that's on the border with Ontario is New York. When I go to Buffalo, New York, there is very little difference in pronunciation. When I go to the state of Michigan which is another state close to us, they tend to say their A's a little bit different, okay? So, my name is Bob. When I go to Michigan, they say Bab. So, they kind of lengthen out the A, the O sound into a bit of an A. If I went to visit Brent who lives in Maine, he would probably have an you know, an an eastern seaboard accent. I can't duplicate it um but there will be no problem if we were to talk. We would have no problem understanding each other. Um I went to Michigan and I had no problem understanding Americans. They had no problem understanding me. American and Canadian English I think is closer in pronunciation than British or Australian English, okay? We share a lot of the same vocabulary we might have a slightly different way of pronouncing it. Let's see here. Kizmo says, hi, teacher Bob. How are you? Should I write cannot one word or cannot two words? Thanks. I have to look this one up because I think he cannot do that. I cannot do that. I think sometimes it's just a matter of of emphasis. Um cannot, cannot. We probably just say can't all the time by the way. (laughs) I can't do that. Um let's see here. So, cannot as one word is better for formal writing whereas when we're speaking we often use cannot. Like we kind of add a little space between it. Using it like I I cannot wait to have a nap this afternoon. If I wanna emphasize it I would say I cannot wait to have a nap this afternoon. So, just a slight difference. We would mostly say can't. I can't wait. Can't wait to have a nap this afternoon. Next question from Fox. You said, I think all of that will be gone by Thursday when I was talking about the snow. How can snow be gone? It doesn't have legs. Can I say when this week is gone? Okay. So, that's an interesting one. Yes, I did definitely say this. In one of my videos, I said this will all be gone. All of the snow will be gone. The snow does leave though. When it melts, it does leave. It turns into water and it goes into the ground. So, we can say that. We can definitely say that it will be gone even though it doesn't have legs. Um with the week though, we would say when this week is over. We do say this though. Um how many days have gone by since your last dentist visit. How many months have gone by? So, we do use the word or the verb gone to talk about time a little bit. 
you know, a few months have gone by um since they announced that the vaccines had been invented. So, we do use uh the verb gone with time as well. Rob has the next question. Uh is it correct to say were you up to? So, these are slightly different questions. So, to be up to something means that you're um able to do it. Like if someone is sick and they went back to work, you could say were you up to going back to work? That means like were you healthy enough to go back to work? Um if I say what are you up to or what you up to? So, when you say what are you up to? That's like this super informal compression of the sentence. It's the same as what are you doing? Okay? So, uh what are you up to? What are you up to? What are you up to or what are you up to? Hey, what are you up to? Um so, the the questions are actually slightly different. Um let me get to the next one. I'm gonna skip the next one um because I think we answered it already. So, Natalia says, how to say thank you in the most polite and grateful way. So, thank you is probably the most polite and grateful way but there are variations on it depending on how strong of emotion you're having and how much how well you know the person. So, if I won an award, I would say thank you very much for this award. I might say thank you so much for this award. I might just say thanks for this award. All of those would be fine, okay? Um but definitely the, the best to go is just thank you. Just go with thank you. Don't don't try to overthink it um because people will totally understand. Um and if if the waiter brings your food and you say, "Oh, thank you so much." That might be too much of a thank you. It might be better just to say thank you to the waiter and then leave a nice tip. Waiters like it when you leave tips. Let's see here. Oh, Army Ant says, "Hi Bob. When you made your lesson about law, you didn't say or you didn't talk about the money that a prisoner pays to be out of prison during the investigation. What is the word for it? It's called bail. So, when you are arrested, you can pay money if the judge decides that it's okay. You can pay bail and then you can get out of jail while the trial is still going on but not everyone is um eligible for bail. I don't know a lot about it but it's not automatic, okay? You don't automatically get to buy your way out of jail by paying bail. Um So, Oji says, hi, Bob. Is there a term to describe someone who is easily suspicious of something? Thank you. Um cynical, someone who's cynical usually questions everything. Someone who is suspicious, you can just use the word suspicious. Um you could say a person is critical. That kind of just means they're negative though, not necessarily suspicious but I would say um let's see. I'm trying to think of another one. Someone who is easily suspicious. We would just say they question everything. So, it's not it's not really a term, right? We would just say, oh, he's he always questions everything or someone who finds things hard to believe. That would be another way to say it. Uh let's see here. I have a lot of questions left. Let me I'll go for another five minutes or so. Hopefully, that's okay with Todd and Dave um and then we will wrap this up. So, let me see here. Um Slava says, hi, Bob. Canada uses two languages but I've heard that French sounds more old-fashioned than in France. Yeah, I think we looked at this in the chat, right? It's possible that it sounds more old-fashioned but I don't know enough. Like, I know how to speak French but it's hard for me to distinguish between the accents. I think Lolly Lolly or one of our other French speakers might have a better idea but do know that in Quebec, they really like to keep the French authentic for sure. Uh let's see here. Next question from Dimitri says, hello, awesome. Hello, awesome, Mr. Bob. There are no questions. All the best and hello to everyone. Well, thanks, Dimitri. That is very nice of you. I appreciate the kind words. Let's see here. Bob from the future says, hi, Bob. It's you from the future. I just wanted to say in two years, You'll take one million subs and you'll be ten times happy th- happier than you are now. Have a good day. We'll see. We're at um I'm at 650,000. It kind of keeps going up so I'm pretty happy about that. If you're new here and not subscribed though, you can help by clicking the subscribe button. That will make that number go up. 
But honestly though, um, I'm not too worried about growing. What I enjoy the most about all of this is having ideas for English lessons and then making the English lesson. So, I I really like making lessons for the people that watch them, okay? It's just fun to think, oh, this is a good idea. People will like this video and they'll learn something from it and then it's really fun for me to make it. Those are the two things that I enjoy. The number of subscribers is nice but it's not something that I worry about too much. Um so, Lucas says, when should I say wanna gonna gotta and when not to because some people have told me really different things. When I'm speaking in my classroom, I actually use these well, they're not contractions, they're reductions. So, wanna is the reduction of want to. Gonna is going to. Uh gotta is I have to. You know, I have to go to town. I gotta go to town. Doesn't really sound like a reduction, does it? Um so, it really depends. It can be okay um to use it even in formal situations but I would say as a new English learner, try to avoid using them unless you are in a small social situation. Um so um yeah, I would save it like if you're out with friends speaking English, definitely use them. If you're talking to your boss, just try to avoid them for a bit and listen to what other people in your work are doing. Next question from Jean. Um what part of Canada do you live in? I live in the province of Ontario and I live close to the city of Hamilton, Ontario. If you Google map Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, that's close. I live close to the Great Lakes. And how long have you been a teacher online? I have been teaching on YouTube for over four years. I have been a high school teacher since the late 90s. So, over 20 years of teaching experience and I have taught mostly French and computer studies but I've also taught English. A long time ago, I taught math once or twice <laughs> um and I teach um I teach computer studies and a little bit of business. That's usually what I teach. My primary job is that I'm a French teacher. Je suis prof de français. Uh let's see here. I'm gonna skip the next one. Uh I'll put it on the screen. It's again the difference between American and Canadian English. Very, very similar. Very similar. Um next question. Vinicius, what is the difference between the American wait that didn't go on the screen. Let me go back. I think I s- clicked the wrong button. There we go. Now, I got it on the screen. Hello, Mr. Bob. I have a question. What's the difference between car and vehicle? So, that spelling of vehicle is not the English spelling but we do use the word vehicle. Thanks a lot. Um vehicle is just a general term. So, I have a van. I also have a car and I used to have a truck. They are all vehicles. So, you can use vehicle to refer to anything that you can drive. Um I think motorcycles would be vehicles as well. Um Aman says, hi, great. (laughs) Hi, great. How are you doing? What's the meaning of beats me? Thanks a lot. Well, if I didn't know the answer, I could say beats me. It just means the same as I don't know. If I say to a student in class, what's the answer to question one and they say beats me. It means they don't know what the answer is. Let's see here. Livia says, hi, Bob. I like to ask about using have and have got. Can I use have got in a formal or polite conversation or it would be considered a bit uncultivated? Thanks. So, I have a van. I've got a van. We would probably use the contraction, right? Like, I have two vehicles. I've got two vehicles. You can say both even in a formal conversation, um it wouldn't sound too uncivilized. I think I've got sounds a little bit uncivilized but honestly, I do use it all the time, okay? Like um I could say something like I have um let me see here. I have two YouTube channels. I've got two YouTube channels. Um means the same. By the way, I do have two YouTube channels. There's another one called Bob's Short English Lessons. You can search for it. Um here I'll put a link in the uh in the chat for a sec. I think I can do that. There we go. Okay, next question. I'm gonna skip the next one. It's a little tricky to answer so sorry about that. Okay, next one. Marcos. Hello from Brazil, Mr. Bob. Do you think about teaching English in private classes? Maybe on platforms like Cambly or similar? It could be very interesting. Thank you. 
I've thought about it Marcos but I really like teaching at my school. I really like the classes that I teach. So, I still work full time and I do YouTube. So, I don't have a lot of time for private classes. What I will say is this. In the future when I'm 55 or 60, I might think about teaching a little more online. I might take on some students in about six or seven years. I've thought about it but I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Uh let's see here. Karen. Hi, Bob. Hope you're okay. Which is right? Tabletop games or board games? Is it possible to use table games? Thanks a lot. In my part of Canada and I think in most of North America, we would say board games. So, checkers, chess, monopoly, all of the games that come in boxes, we would call them board games. Um definitely. Uh Guan says, hi, Bob. Good morning in Canada. For your information, in Malaysia is actually midnight. <laughs> I just want to know what is the best city to visit in Canada. They're all good but if I was to recommend one, I'm going with Montreal right now. That's my new favorite Canadian city. I'd like to go there this summer. We'll see. Um Arfa says, can you make us understand narrations? I'm confused of it or with it. Um the best way to understand someone narrating something if you're having trouble is to start by reading along. So, I often encourage people who do watch videos on my second channel to read along. I put the transcript in the description on that channel to read along as they watch it or to read the transcript before they watch it or to read the transcript after they watch it. There's a lot of different ways to help understand when someone's just narrating something. So, that's what I would say to that one. Um William. Hi, Bob. My pronunciation is good but my vocabulary is terrible. How to acquire more vocabulary? I often recommend reading, finding new words in what you're reading and use those words as soon as possible and multiple times in the next few days in writing or when talking. Let's see here. What's the difference between component and peripheral? Thank you. So, computers have peripherals like mice. And they have components like hard drives that go inside them. So, if Tali, if you're speaking about technology, uh, a component goes inside a computer. A peripheral is attached to the computer. Um let's see here. Yaroslav says, hi, teacher Bob. People say the older we get, the harder the harder it is to study a foreign language. Okay, little correction there. Do you agree with this? Do you agree with that? Hope you have an awesome weekend. Thanks in advance. I don't. I actually think it might be harder to speak the language without an accent. I think when you're older, that can be quite challenging but I think it's actually maybe easier to learn a language when you're older because you might have a little bit more time um, on your hands. Let's see here. Farhat says, hello, what is the difference between true, correct and right? What situations can we use? In what situations can we use these words? Little correction there, thanks. Um when something is true, it means that it's not false, it's not fake, okay? When you watch the news and they tell you something that happened, the story is true, okay? It's not something that's made up, it's not a lie, it's true. When something is correct, it's not wrong. So, two plus two equals four, that is correct. 2 plus 2 equals 5 is incorrect. So, we're talking about whether something is correct or not. And then right is the same as correct. If something is right, it means that it is correct. Um I'm gonna skip the next one. It's a grammar question. Um this uh let's see here. I can't answer this one specifically but Swallow Roberto says, hi Barb. Hi Barb. My name's not Barb. My name's Bob. What book do you use to teach English? Can you recommend some? I can't recommend books to you because I'm not currently teaching English but what I would say is this. I teach French. I use a lot of authentic resources to teach French. I use French music. I use French podcasts from Duolingo. I use French uh, television shows from Quebec like actual shows. So, if you are able to Try to surround yourself with as much like normal English as you can possibly find. Uh let's see here. 
Lloyd says, hi, Bob. I want to know what is the meaning of I cross my mind. So, we wouldn't say that, Lloyd, but we would say that something crossed your mind, okay? Um like yesterday, I was out to pick something up for Jen and it crossed my mind that it might be a good idea to get pizza on the way home for the kids. So, it means that you thought of something. Uh let's see here. Um clicking the wrong buttons. Pusun says, hi, Bob. I am new in Ottawa. How do you rate life there? Ottawa is a beautiful city. I've been there a couple of times in my life and students from our school go on a trip to Ottawa. I haven't been on that trip yet. I should do that someday. It is a beautiful city. It's our nation's capital. It has the parliament buildings. Um I would I would rate life there as 10 out of 10. There's a really cold winter though. Watch out for that. Uh let's see here. So, Steve says, hi, teacher Bob. What is the difference between work in process and work in progress? So, when something's in process or in progress, it simply means it isn't done yet but I would say we use work in progress quite a bit more often. That's a little more common, I think. Um let's see here. Lisa says, hello, teacher. Can we use the past in poetry? Thank you. Yes, definitely. You could say things like um the moon Let's see. The moon was I can't write poetry on the spot. I was trying to think of a good little poem but I couldn't think of one. Um but you can definitely write poetry in the past tense if you want. There's no problem with that. Um couple more questions here and we'll wrap this up. Uh from Marcin. Hi, Bob. In your opinion, speaking to oneself as a way to practice speaking English makes sense? Yes, 100%. I often recommend that if you can't find enough time to speak to a native speaker. When you can, just say out loud what you're doing. Record your voice and listen to it. Um read something out loud when you're reading it. If you're reading a book, read every tenth page out loud because speaking is about connecting the words from your brain with the muscles in your mouth and learning to form the correct sounds. It's just a good idea. So, yes, uh walking around talking to yourself is a good idea for learning English. Uh let's see here. Nirana says, hello, teacher Bob. How is it going? Good. My question is, what's the difference between mumble, mutter and whisper? Thanks in advance. So, a whisper is like this. Welcome to the lesson. I hope you all enjoy your time here and learn a lot of English. That would be me whispering. Mumbling and muttering are the same thing. It's like it's when people are making like they're saying words but they're not opening their mouth enough. They're just kind of muttering or mumbling to themselves. Uh let's see here. Lillian says, hi, Bob. Can you teach me some words about when talking about a long-term distance relationship? Thanks a lot. Well, there are a lot of words for that. You will probably miss the person a lot. You probably will feel um you'll probably be sad a lot because you can't be with them. Um I could do a whole lesson on that but uh right now it doesn't come to mind but you're certainly gonna be emailing and texting a lot. You will probably have virtual dates where you meet each other on Zoom and you eat your meal and your um significant other eats theirs for sure. Um let's see here. So, Barbara, hi, Bob. Could you tell us a bit about your first years as an English teacher? So, I'll tell you about the first English class I taught. The first English class I taught, um I had to teach grammar and the students did not like learning grammar and the book that I needed to teach them was uh, a Shakespeare book called Romeo and Juliet and if any of you have ever read Shakespeare even in your own language, that was a very difficult book to teach people in an English class. Now, you should know when I say I was teaching English, in English, sorry, in Canada, um English students take English classes even though they speak English. They take it to learn grammar. They take it to learn how to write, et cetera, et cetera. So, but I definitely remember my first English class. Um the students did not enjoy uh Romeo and Juliet. It was very hard for them to understand. Uh let's see here. Kagla says, I can understand when somebody speaks English and I can speak English with someone but I can't do grammar things. What can I do to improve my grammar skills? Thank you. So, my understanding is this that reading in English 
and then doing a lot of conversation practice will both really help you with your grammar but you should still spend a little bit of time studying the specifics and then for that I highly recommend that you watch YouTube videos about specific grammar tenses and grammar usage. It can be really helpful but it works best if you're already reading a lot and having conversations because then you can connect the two together. Uh let's see here. Just a few more questions and we'll wrap this up. By the way, if you asked a question in the last couple of minutes, I probably won't get to it but I am near the end. Bear Vilson. Hi, Bear Vilson. Uh Bear Vilson is a long time viewer of this channel. Hi, Bear Vilson. Um is podcast in French on Duolingo good for beginners learning French? Thanks a lot. I think so. I like the Duolingo podcast because the presenter speaks in English and then switches to French and then switches to English. So, it's kind of cool because you hear both languages. By the way, if you go to podcasts on Duolingo, if you are a French speaker learning English, you would benefit from those as well. They're really cool to listen to. There are many of them. I think there's 40 or 50 now. So, they're really really cool. I do like them. Uh let's see here. I think this one's on the screen. When says, hi, Bob. I began to work in the UK and I found they use a lot of the word advice for the meaning of inform. Is this common in Canada? Can you advice on this invoice? Can you give advice? I'm not sure. They might use it a bit differently there. We would use advice in terms of giving someone um like telling someone how to do something like I wanna make a YouTube video. Can you give me some advice? So, when maybe we use it a little bit differently, I will have to look that one up. Um So, you know what just happened? We, we, I, I answered all the questions I think. I think that's everybody. Um it's 12 20. I went a bit longer than normal. So, uh I do wanna say thank you to the 500 people watching. If you're new here, you should click that subscribe button. I make a new video every Tuesday. It's usually short but informative and somewhat entertaining. I do a live lesson every Friday. This past Friday, we did a lesson on the dentist and the eye doctor. Remember, a shorter version of this video will come out in about 24 hours and it will have automatic English subtitles at the bottom which is quite handy. Um do remember if there were parts of this live stream that you had trouble understanding, do come back and watch it in a few days. It should have automatic English subtitles. That might help you understand it but other than that, I wanna say thanks to Dave and Todd. You guys are awesome here every week. Uh, helping keep the chat organized. I'm not sure if you're still here because I went longer than expected but uh it's good to have you two guys on board. Uh thanks to Aniko and Julia Olise for being members. I see them in the chat. Daniel Lockman also a member. Natalia Belgrade, Panthera Nori. Uh scrolling back, Semra is a member as well. I know Madi was here earlier. Natalia Belgrade, I might have said your name already. Um I'm just scrolling back through the chat to see all of the members that are here. So awesome. To have you guys uh, support the channel. You're great. Oh, and Norma's here. I see Norma's name pop up as well. Uh, and then a few other people. Natalia Illusion, a regular here. Good to see you again, Natalia. Athanasios um and a few more names that I recognize. Let me scroll back. I think I should wrap this up. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great weekend uh and come back Tuesday. I I think you'll like it. Um I don't wanna give away too many um of I don't I don't wanna be give you any spoilers about the upcoming lesson on Tuesday but I think